Okay. I think when we want to start here, here is our improvisation one, which has been voiced for vocal. And then what we've done with it is we have here pushed it through a reverb. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Motion Part 20, Paths Part 2. In today's episode, we re-entered by mentioning we appreciate all feedback. We had a chance to share our work to date at Open Mic yesterday. Feedback is the universe pinging back at us. Um, we had really interesting feedback on what people imagined as they listened to the work. Um, we realized uh, that when we listen to our stream highlight, we are doing live reverb. Here's an example of live reverb. Here we go. This is an example of live voice reverb. Reverb. The trick is you arm the vocal channel and it's being fed through these lower thingies into uh, an actual reverb. And we, and we showed that to you yesterday. We showed you that this has a, a, a send thing somewhere. I think it's hiding because somewhere in there, there's a send showing. In any event, so we were able to take a recorded uh, a piano recording and send it through the left pan, right pan reverb. And then we could change that and send the piano recording. And then again, if we just pretend we're going to record, but we don't, then our voice is going through instead. So that was kind of a key learning for us today. So we did that. Um, We still want to work with uh, note shaping and things like that. Uh, we're going to put that down here. So then we moved on. Once we'd made a couple of those recordings, we went ahead and made. Uh, uh, we had we had we had changed this back and forth from piano to vocal. Uh, recorded both of those, and then we went in and made a. Uh, a visual animation. This is our piano reverb animation. And this is the first time ever that we've managed to have something move horizontally across the screen in time with the music and not just be going back and forth like a sine or a square wave or something. And we're still using the vertical trails, as you saw. And the trick was we had to use something called trigger, which we were trying a couple last series, but we never figured it out. So it's a little bit interesting, but you kind of have to reset the position. And then the way it works is every time the volume hits over the trigger value, it's going to march forward 0.1 um, across the screen. And we timed it so that it moves exactly from left to right. And we're going to show you that at the end here. So we did that. We, we also did a, a, a reverb um, version as well of, of the, uh, the vocal. Then, perhaps most fun of all, we wanted to get back to working with music added to media. And so we did have a video of us giving a presentation uh, in our 3D world, and you've seen us talk about 3D piano kits and all that. So we used uh, what you just listened to, the piano version, as incidental music for the intro and the extra. So let's just play this much of it for you here. Here's the title intro. This 
display. 3D piano kits allow visual as well as aural composition. And then at the end, and what was so much fun about this uh, this group was they by by the end of it, you remember, and we we moved up to orchestra kits, and we showed that to you in the last series in composing in multiple dimensions series, and they were having a blast with it. So this is the wrap up and fade into the end music. By the way, you can also hum and sing. Yeah, there we go. So we got that done. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and play the uh, this animation for you all the way through. It's very short. It's it's the one we pretty much just made yesterday, which is all of, I don't know what it was, a minute? But it has these really cool horizontal effect. Here we go. So um, that ends today's stream. There are a lot of things we like about this animation. We like the color balance of the purple and the yellow. We like the trails fading into the distance. We like how the fading trails visually um, complement the aural uh, reverb. Um, and we like that we took some simple composition and were able to use it here and use it in the video. So um, our ideas for next time are to uh, learn more about live music, back, music playback options. So we, we know how to play, use a recording and we know how to use our live voice, but we're wondering, is there a way to feed the music as it comes out of MuseScore, for example, right into um, uh, reverb or whatever? Um, Keep working with our scales, timbres, uh, keep working with the music applied to media and our friend To Be Determined. Shout out to Yashwani, who came back, haven't seen him for a bit. Uh, new chat, Lash, Lash came by, Mr. Spatz has been here, and Miss Cleo, as always. We appreciate your comments and feedback. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back and do keep on streaming.